so this is another video uh, to to give you some hints on the one one of the problem I have given for you in the test here uh, you, you here the question here is a uh, uh, determine the force P which must be applied at A in order to support a 100 kilogram crate. So there is a crate that weighs 100 kilogram and there are two of every members shown with connecting members perpendicular to the paper at every joint and a light platform bridges the two members D. The friction at the joints is negligible and all members are light. Friction beneath member CF is sufficient to prevent slippage. So there are, uh, uh, so this uh, looks like a, this is drawn like a uh, system in 2D but there is, uh, the, the crate has a third dimension, not only the crate, everything has a third dimension out of the paper but we don't need to consider it. We, we can simply assume that this is a 2D system and solve the problem. And uh, members are light, platform is light, uh, members are light. Means the only mass or weight you need to consider is that of the crate. Friction beneath the members uh, are sufficient to uh, is sufficient to prevent the slippage which means there is no there is no motion there is no velocity so you don't need to consider the dynamic aspect there is no friction on the joints and uh, mass of the crate is given and you can convert it to weight right you can mg 100g will be the weight so here uh, first you can draw the as we always do, a good point to start start with will be the free body diagram of DE combined with the crate. So here, uh, so there is a weight 100 G acting downwards at point G. And there is support from here and here. So I will, uh, so there should be, two components of the force, horizontal and vertical component. So there will be a force in arbitrary direction on E, since we don't know the direction, I have uh, split into two parts. the horizontal and vertical part and uh, well the direction here is uh, the direction here is not a problem because uh, you can get it from okay okay I'll explain I think I confused too so similarly on the other side also you have you have two force component one in horizontal direction and one in vertical direction So here I can call this one F I, I can call this uh, R D X and this one R D Y uh, this one
सो ऑन द अदर साइड the direction of the force you can see that uh, the member d e uh, member f e here okay the member f e here Uh, is a member on which there are no uh, other there are no forces in between the member f e there are no moments so the direction of force must be in the direction of f e right so fe fe acts like a member of a truss because on fe uh, if you remember the definitions of a member of a truss uh, uh, the forces are only at the joint there are no forces in between there are no moments also these two are pin joints so the direction of force at fe will be this one means the direction of fe itself so so this is the direction of force in fe so i can divide it into if this angle is theta if that angle is theta means this angle is theta or this angle is theta those are the same angles i can write the force component i can divide the net force into two components f uh, r e let's call it r net force uh, if the net force is r e uh, this is r e sin theta and this is re cos theta and what is the value of theta if you can take take out this uh, little triangle there this is the angle theta so tan theta is equal to tan theta is equal to 76 divided by 130 this is 76 and this is 130 so theta is equal to tan inverse that quantity so theta is known right so this is uh, r is sin theta and this is r is cos theta so that's it, that is done so for this system you have a uh, how many unknowns r dx r dy and r e theta is known so three unknowns and uh, you will have three equations you can solve the system so net force in x direction is equal to zero which means that uh, you know r dx is uh, net force in x direction is zero that means that r d x plus r e cos theta r cos theta equal to zero any other force no equal to zero both are towards right and similarly r dy plus 
or is sin theta plus not plus then you have 100 g downwards minus 100 g is equal to 0 and you can take moment moment about this point if you take moment about this point r d x and r d y are passing through that point so in the moment equation terms of r d x and r d y will not be there the perpendicular distance between line of action of 100 g and the point d right we are taking moment about d okay moment about d is zero so perpendicular distance between line of action of 100 g and the point d is 305 so 100 g multiplied by 305 and that is a uh, that is a clockwise moment so negative and then you have r e cos theta what is the perpendicular distance between line of action of r e cos theta and point d this is r e cos theta what is the line of action of r e cos theta this is the line of action of r e cos theta if you draw a very long line if you draw a very long line so this is r e this is the line of action of r e cos theta right infinite line so that line is passing through d so r e cos theta multiplied by 0 perpendicular distance between line of action of r e cos theta and the point d is 0 so r e cos theta term gone r e sin theta term remains right so r e sin theta multiplied by what is the perpendicular distance between r e sin theta and point d that is 130 that is uh, what is that distance that distance is uh, there are two members on the So that distance is uh, how much? Here to here uh, 130, here to here 60. Yes, this is horizontal. This is horizontal. And uh, this, this distance must be equal to this distance. If this is 130, this should also be 130. because these two has to be parallel fe and cd are parallel so this distance is 130 distance from uh, sorry distance from here to here sh should also be 130 so the perpendicular distance between line of action of r e sin theta r e sin theta and the point d is 130 so here r e sin theta is acting here so distance from here to here is nothing but 610 so this is if this is 610 this will also be 610 or 610 plus 130 minus 130 which is again 610 and uh, upward force anti clockwise moment so that quantity will be positive r is sin theta multiplied by 610 which will be a positive quantity so add them all up equal to 0 net moment equal to 0 so that uh, there you have the equation so you have three equations one net force in x direction 0 net here another one net force in uh, y direction 0 and moment equation so in the moment equation there will be only two terms 100 g multiplied by this distance and r is sin theta multiplied by this distance there are no other terms so 
you will get there are three unknowns re rdy rdx so you can calculate all of them so once you have rdx and rdy you can once you have rdx and rdy what you can do is there are there are two options here you can do it in any way you like but what i propose is that you can simply draw this part first and then this one take the equilibrium of the whole system together what what are the different unknowns here you have force p acting horizontally and uh, here we have uh, rdx is the force from bd on de so newton's uh, reaction pair will be in opposite direction which is rdx uh, you may get negative value for rdx right you, because this is in same direction of course you you have negative direction uh, i mean negative value in that case you can use negative value here no problem and rdx uh, then you have rdy vertically upwards which is uh, also a non quantity because you have already calculated it and from here uh this this part also you can take out take this part also you can consider the free body diagram of the a b c d sorry a b c d a b c d b the whole thing together okay so all forces here in the joints are internal forces so external forces on the joint here we have already calculated and we have uh, used it here uh, one mistake i've done is uh, see rdx the newton's law pair of rdx should have opposite direction here similarly rdy also should have opposite direction means rdy should be a vertical force and on c also you have a force which is in which has an arbitrary direction and an arbitrary magnitude we don't care about it because i am going to take moment about this point okay now you need only one equation to solve the problem net moment about c equal to 0 so that equation will be p multiplied by distance between line of action of p and the point c this is the line of action of p distance between line of action of p and the point c is a uh, 675 plus 190 and uh, that is causing uh, about c it is causing a anti clockwise moment so positive and then here you have two unknown forces you have a rdx here this is the line of action of uh, rdx what is the perpendicular distance between see this is the line of action of rdx what is the perpendicular distance between line of action of rdx and the point c that is 76 the distance between this line and this point that is 76 so r uh, rdx multiplied by 76 and uh, this is the direction of force so th that is causing a about c this force is causing a anti clockwise moment so again positive 
but this may become negative due to the negative value of rdx when you calculate rdx you may get negative value you can use that value as such okay, that's a different issue then you have rdy what is the line of action of rdy rdy is uh, this is the line of action of rdy what is the perpendicular distance between line of action of rdy and the point c that is uh, this distance which is 130 so r r dy multiplied by 130 so this is a downward force so about c it's causing a clockwise moment so negative equal to zero so from the first set of equations you have already calculated r dx and r dy p is the only unknown here you can directly calculate p determine the p is the question uh, so that's it now you can solve the problem